Hello and welcome once again to Bonus Boys. Wait, mm. shit, no, this is Best Boys. Exactly. And let me tell you... Joe, what did I say? You gotta sit back in your chair because it's okay. a very sensitive microphone. I'll, I'll handcuff myself like the cop in yours of our dogs. Yeah, do that, Joe. That'll hold you back there. Okay. Uh, but uh, we're back from the Halloween break. I mean, well, kind of. Yeah, I mean, we recorded The Big Lebowski before this, which will come yes. out. Yes, we did. But there's been a bit of a break uh, due to a whole bunch of reasons. But we're back. And we're we're bester than ever. Yeah, exactly. You know, we could even use the word better. Yeah, but I wouldn't. Yeah, I use butter. Like, oh, look at look at that cow. That's butter. That's butter than the other one. Yeah, look at this butter on this movie theater popcorn. <laughs> so, the movie we're watching now is Punk Drunk Love. Punch Drunk Love. I sound like I'm drunk. Yeah. It is a rom com. Yes. With Adam Sandler. Yes, it's kind of a romantic comedy drama starring Adam Sandler. A rom rom comma. It's a rom dramedy. That just sounds like Mass Effect Andromeda. Uh, Mass Effect Ram Drogedy. And everybody knows how much the internet hates that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn internet. But mm. so this movie, seen from the back of the cover here, which uh says Barry Egan is a socially impaired owner of a small novelty business who is dominated by seven sisters and is unlikely to find love unless it finds him. Mm. When a mysterious woman comes into his life, his emotions go haywire, fluctuating between uncontrollable rage, lust, and self-doubt. Yeah. Punch-drunk love leaves you addled, a little dizzy, and overcome by a pleasing, un- unplaceable? Yeah. unplaceable sensation? Yeah, it just means you don't know where it is, like where it came from. <laughs> and then it's got a cross after that. A romantic comedy, as wonderful as it is strange, it expands the genre to its absurdest outer limits and makes us believe. From writer-director of Boogie Nights and Magnolia, Punch yes. Drunk Love is a dark, lovely, and unique film experience. Yeah, um, so this is directed and ran by Paul Thomas Anderson. He's definitely one of my favorite contemporary directors. He made Magnolia, which is probably my favorite movie ever made. And so this is right after Magnolia. That's a sprawling three-hour epic focused on, like, eight different characters. This is a very small movie about one character, and that character is Adam Sandler. Now, why Adam Sandler? So, um, he he kind of recognized that there was some talent in Sandler that he just didn't really think was getting used, and he actually likes watching Sandler comedies just whenever he wants to chill out. So he, he knew he wanted to make it a, um, like a personal feature about this one guy. Um, and he just really wanted to do something with Sandler. Right after Magnolia, he said that the next two movies he wanted to make were an Adam Sandler movie and a Daniel Day-Lewis movie. And that actually came true, because the next movie after this was There Will Be Blood, of Daniel Day-Lewis. Wow. Um, well, what Adam Sandler movie followed There Will Be Blood? No, this was before. This oh. was Punch, yeah. Oh, 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 so this is what he wanted to make, and then he went. Okay. Yes, and then he went to make There Will Be Blood. Okay, all right. So, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go watch the movie, and we'll be back with our opinions. Yeah, no, um, I definitely I love Adam Sandler in this. Even if if his mug puts you off of watching this, I'd say definitely give it a chance. I mean, he's able to act. Surprisingly. Yeah, yeah, I was shocked. Because I, I mean, basically, he's just kind of like a walking guy, just standing around. He likes to stand in his movies, and he likes to walk, and that's all about how he does. So I guess we'll go ahead and we'll watch it, and then we'll come back. Yeah. So that was Punch Drunk Love, a rom com. What, what was it again, Joe? A rom dramedy. A rom dramedy, and look, Joe, you better lock your hands back behind that chair, young man. Oh, 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 oh. So. I actually really like this movie. I, from what I, when I was younger, I would watch Adam Sandler movies, and they're just just fun movie. Little Nicky, whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, not, eight crazy nights. Yeah, eight crazy yeah, nights. Man. Yeah, I mean, they're not gonna they're not, they're not gonna win any Oscars. You know, I'm not going to an Adam Sandler movie to be mentally chal- oh, mentally uh, challenged. That's ah, a good choice see, of words. Slip, Freudian slip. <laughs> but yeah, this was a very uh, good movie. I enjoyed it. Cool, cool. Uh, M. Sandler is working. I, I, I'm glad it told you on a DVD cover what his business was because I had no fucking clue. Yeah, yeah, it's like not very uh, implied much. He's kind of in a back alley. Yeah, and they and I, I thought he was selling plungers or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got them at some point, and then yeah. he's got the pudding plungers, and uh, there was a whole subplot about pudding, and yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is basically, um, Adam Sandler, if, 
he was playing one of his characters in his normal movies in real life. He's like this socially awkward, like, man-child full of rage. And everybody around him reacts as if this is real. His sisters are... Oh my god, his sisters are fucking oh, yeah. terrible. Yeah, no, no, yeah, definitely. They're overbearing. But they yeah, you can are... see how he would want to snap. Yeah, Jesus Christ. So, the entire time I was watching, any scene that had his sisters in the thing, I was just thinking, this is Alex. Because Alex's family, the only men in his family are himself, his grandpa, and I think one uncle. Yeah. And all I could think of is just, this must be what it's like to be Alex. Like, if yeah, he decided yeah. to stay around his family, he would have snapped and beat the shit out of a really nice restaurant's bathroom. Yeah, yeah, but at least he didn't snap and... Take a gun. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I first, I've heard of, I heard of Punch, Lung, Punch Drunk Love before, and it was in a fucking South Park episode. Oh, I don't think I saw that one. It was the one where Cartman um, is Mr. Roboto. Oh, Osimo, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Osimo. Okay. And he says, he's like, Punch Drunk Love, uh, Adam Sandler inherits a million dollars, and he has to win it in a ring. And that's honest, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. thought that's what this movie was. No. I thought, like, okay, he's going to, like, snap. And then someone's going to be like, get really good at hitting. Yeah, like he, he's going to flip out in this bathroom. And then you're going to see this uh, this guy. He used to be a coach. Yeah. But now he's washed up and he's out of here after he lost hey that there. final fight. Oh, hey there, young man. Oh, would you like? I see you got some grit. You got some grit between your teeth. Oh, if you want to come over and I'll teach you to box. See, I genuinely thought that might be the direction it goes in. It's mm-hmm. all like, is there going to be some grizzled, some old guy, you know, he's got a busted up face. He's like. Yeah, see, so you got a lot of fight in your kid. How about you take it out in the ring? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it didn't. No, it didn't turn into Rocky Six. No. Uh oh, they, that's right. They are. They, well, it would have been Rocky Seven because they are on Six now. Rocky Balboa, and then they also did Creed, so that's Seven. So now, if they want to make another, it's Eight. Oh wow. Yeah. So. Oh, I was gonna say at one point there actually was going to be a Rocky sequel where he goes to Mars and hits the Martians. That was scripted at one point. Why was it not released? It was just scripted, and they didn't go with it. That sounds like a fantastic idea. Yeah. But uh, speaking of Rocky, so Punch Drunk Love, it had that, that Adam Sand there kind of, eh, 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 uncomfortable kind of standing around, heads kind of at a down angle, his shoulders are really, really low, he's not wanting to be here. Yeah. He, uh, opening of the movie, he, uh, He's in this office that looks straight out of Mirror's Edge, where it's got these whites and blues and these solid lines going across it. I really, the yeah. cinematography in this movie and the lighting was like I liked it. it was oh very, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, like it was well shot. Uh, there's a lot of scenes where it transitions from one to the other, and it's got a very smooth, very smooth background as it goes from left to right. By which I mean not like just smooth camera, but like yeah, like the, whooshing, like whoosh, yeah, steady cam. Because remember this 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 is an Adam Sandler movie, so they have to go to Hawaii at some point. And oh, when they yeah, did yeah. go to Hawaii, it had the transition from it was night, then it moved over to the right, and it was it was uh, the end of the day. You saw the sun. That was nicely done. Just a lot of small moments like that that kind of stood out. Yeah, and um, this was actually before J.J. Abrams got onto the scene with all his lighting. Um, so I mean, this this is like really over the top lighting, which you can see, but it works really well in the movie. Yeah. So he. Um, he goes to this party that his sister... The opening movie, he's getting called by his sisters constantly. He's got, what, seven sisters? Yeah, seven. Seven sisters. And they're constantly trying to, hey, you, wanna, you going to this party? You going to this party? You better be there. You better yeah. be there, you fucking asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, all right, all right, fine, fine. Uh, he goes there, and you hear them... It, God, they are so, I, I can't even properly describe how big pieces of shit. His they sisters are their little brother. They are the absolute worst. If I was him, I would have thrown a hammer into the window, into that party. Yeah, yeah. No, because um, yeah, they're just basically like teasing them about being a gay boy, and they keep poking them in the belly and go, "Oh yeah, yeah, we used to call you gay boy." <laughs> Time to eat. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. So he just can't fucking take it. He breaks a window and. And after this, you know, he kind of work out how he's feeling, how he's so fucking mad all the time because mm. he's in this terrible situation with these fucking terrible sisters constantly on his ass. And... Well, I mean, the thing of it is with the window break scene, you expect uh, for that to be like a heroic moment for him and like the tension to release, but they immediately just start screaming at him 
And he's like even like a bigger loser in their eyes now than before. Yep, you would expect to be like, whoa, shit, why'd you do that? No, it's just, what the fuck's wrong with you, you freak? Yeah. It's like, um, uh, hmm, good, good, good family. Good, uh, that's, that's what we call a Del Guard family. Mm, well, I mean, he just smashed up like a thousand bucks worth of window. Yeah, well, maybe there was a reason he did it. But nah, you don't give a shit about that, you terrible. I fucking hated his sisters. Oh yeah. my god. But anyway, that's enough about them. So, I guess he's just trying to figure out how to talk to people or something. So he calls up an intimate phone service. Yeah. Well, no, no, I mean, he does want a jerk, but yeah. Okay, so he is calling a jerk. He's yeah, just, just very... learnly and jerk. Yeah, he's just... Okay, so okay, so he was hacking and whacking and smacking, chopping yeah, yeah. that. Because there's a shot where you see Adam Sandler jerking his little meat. Yeah, yeah. So, what he does there, and that's one of the key parts of the movie, he provides this kind of shady service with all his information, and then they start trying to blackmail him. Yeah. And, uh... Yep, yeah, so... He eventually meets, um, I believe her name was Lena. Yes. Yeah, he eventually meets Lena, a girl from the start of the movie, and uh, they start getting to know each other. He starts, uh, when he was talking with his sisters and anyone else, he was always, like, immediately lying about everything. Yeah. Trying to, like, cerebrally coming up with all these excuses and reasonings for the weird stuff that he does. He won't admit that he's doing anything to anyone because he's incredibly uncomfortable around them. He feels super anxious. He starts. He starts getting to know her. She for like she firstly like shows up, and I thought this was a little weird. She says that later in the movie that uh, the sisters were one of his sisters are showing her a family photo. And yeah, because like, they both work together. Yeah, and she like inst like almost instantly fell in love with Adam Sandler for some well, reason. He, she wanted to meet him right away, and then because it, I it's heavily kind of implied that she's got some kind of disorder too she's like incredibly lonely and nervous you just don't get to see her break ever like you get to see Adam Sandler break yeah I kind of got a feeling that she was really lonely when a after the Hawaii segment she talks about oh yeah I travel a lot you know I've been on planes thousands of times so I'm like okay I'm starting to I think I'm starting to understand now yeah I mean, because um, every time she meets anyone because she said that she had a boyfriend she was married before but she's not anymore, and she doesn't, you know, doesn't explain why, on screen at least. And I kind of assume it might be because she's constantly traveling all over the country for her work. Because she has a British accent, and she's in uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah, California. Yeah, Los Angeles, California, where the movie takes place. And, because the movie takes place, it's, it's a uh, multi-state movie. Mm. Hawaii, California, and Utah. He, uh, he works out his anger issues, kind of, uh... He starts, he, he starts, uh, he cuts up his credit card and he tells these people to fuck off that are trying to blackmail him. So they try and, you know, they, they try and like force the money, try to force to steal the money off of him, try to crash his car. He goes ape shit and kind of spirals away from there. But yeah, uh, it's a solid, solid movie. I'm skipping, I'm kind of skipping, jumping yeah, all over yeah, the place because yeah. I don't want to spoil everything about the movie. I will True. say. That the ending was actually genuinely very sweet. I didn't oh yeah, expect yeah, it. yeah. No, it's a it's a hardcore like romantic movie for people who don't like romantic movies. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, with uh, with an actual good romantic movie, it's fine because it's just a good movie. Uh, like I mean, I find that most people who say that they don't like uh, like romantic comedies or dramas or uh, they musicals watch... or whatever, you just watch a couple shit ones and then yeah, like I watched your impression um... of it. Oh, fuck, what was it? Um, it was a very, very famous musical about uh, a girl in, like, the streets of London that gets raised to be a proper woman. Hmm. I watched that, and that was actually enjoyable. Yeah. Was it The Sound of Wind or something? Uh, The Sound of Music. Sound of Music, yeah. I think that might be it. It could. Oh, and what? then The Music Man, I enjoyed that. Because yeah, The, the Music Man singer? was good. Yeah, I didn't see The Jazz oh, Singer. Oh, okay, okay. That's, like, the first one to ever have sound. Um, I mean, what the thing with like musicals is they were big in the like 40s, 50s, 60s, and like at that point, like movies were still kind of staged. You weren't really, couldn't really, like humanity wasn't really portrayed in those movies. They were actors acting like actors, which is why there's a big disconnect for most of them. But yeah, so Joe would uh, so after the movie, I went up to, to to go to the bathroom, and he kept shushing me out of my room. Because you're putting together a list of something that I wouldn't, that would surprise yes, me. Yes, yes, I do have a weird list. Um, oh, actually, I'm gonna do that last. Oh, okay. So, give me, give me some, give me a quick rundown on. So, Paul Tam Thomas Anderson yes, is the one who made this movie. I love him. He stars in this movie as a really fun character. 
No, no, that's oh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Phil, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's right, that's right. That's yeah. right, yeah. Um, he's th- a really fun character. No, yeah, Philip Seymour Hoffman, he's a great actor, and he was in most of Paul Thomas Anderson's movies before he died. He just died a couple years ago. Uh, yeah, heroin overdose, actually. Ooh, nice. Yeah, 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 got him. Um... So yeah, like that instrument in the movie, the harmonium it's called, that's actually what they used to make the like pretty much the whole soundtrack. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Neat. Yeah, because Barry's is all busted up, I can't really do much. But yeah, yeah, his... I mean, that's kind of an obvious metaphor. Where yeah, he's he just gets got to around the harmonium. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all busted up, he starts fixing it up, and then eventually he takes it and brings it to Lena, and that... And that's so obvious of, like, a metaphor, I didn't even bring it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but see, because um, one time I picked up a harmonica from the ground, but it spit all up in it, I couldn't yep. use it. Yep. And that's why you caught herpes. Yeah, I got the herp. So, tell me a little bit more about, uh, g- give me the deepest lore here, Joe. Uh, okay, so do you, would you like to go into the strange thing? Because I can see you're kind of anxious for well, it. Uh, well, well, we'll save that for the, the cherry on top here. Okay. Um, so basically... Uh, right from the beginning, I mean, Anderson really, really wanted Sandler in this. Um, he approached him on SNL and, like, asked if he would ever be interested, and Sandler said yes. So he kind of created... He had written most of Punch Drunk Love before he and Sandler met, but then he customized it for Sandler and his character. Um, which really adds to it, because, I mean, I, I can't really see anyone else playing this well. Yeah, I mean... The next, I mean, when I'm thinking of, like, kind of generally, like, if you think of somebody who does, like, an anxious, kind of nervous actor, in the, you know, you think of, like, someone like Michael Sarah, no way he'd be. Well, I'm thinking of the time, I mean. Yeah, even yeah. Uh, of the, like, even now, I'm trying to think, Michael Sarah, definitely not. He's yeah. a little, he's a little, a little weird boy. Nah, I don't think he has a range. No, no. Uh, they have to, I mean, it, it would be an, it's an older character. He's not, you know, he's not young and spry. He's like late thirties, forties, you know. Yeah. So he's an older character that has to. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's very yeah. very I sandal. Mean, maybe the Ghostbusters guy. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Egan. Yeah, the weird guy, uh, who turns into the gatekeeper. Oh, um, oh, maybe actually. Yeah. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. I don't remember his name. No, I don't either. But I mean, yeah, I mean, but even then, you know, Sandler's a fucking perfect fit. Yeah. He is, he is that perfect fit inside of a dragon sleeve, inside of another Mm, one. Exactly. But then you take that dragon sleeve and you, uh, take it and you get the plane chase sleeves for the oversized plane chase cards and you wrap it up in three more of those. Mm -hmm. And then you take that, put a top loader, take it. Put it in, and then you take a lamination thing and you laminate over the top of it, and then you, nobody's touching your cards ever again. Yep, not even you. Yeah, not even me. Nope. And that's how you play Magic the Gathering. Oh yeah. Oh, I can tell you about that. Let me tell you. Uh, okay, let's not talk about Magic the Gathering. Sure, sure. That's off topic. Um, what was I gonna? Yeah, yeah. Um, nothing about Eldrazi's in this movie. Nope. No. Oh, I mean, maybe. But we were talking about how Sandler was uh, fit to the role. Yes. Exactly. Oh, that's right. Um, so in his earlier movies, he does like uh, he Happy Gilmore, The Water Boy. Before this, um, he did I can't uh, Big Daddy. Yes, Big Daddy was before this. So this is two thousand two. I liked Big Daddy. Um, I, I don't think, care if it was a bad movie. So I think um, there actually is something to Happy Gilmore and Big Daddy. Um, but I can't stand The Water Boy, and I don't like Billy Madison. Um, really? No. Billy Madison was no, goofy to me. I enjoyed it. Um, there's a couple good jokes in it, but it's obnoxious. A little Nicky, even I know that movie's terrible. No, if you go back and watch even the stuff that people consider the classics, I mean, it doesn't hold up. Like ugh. I can wa- I used to watch Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, uh, when Matrix yeah, Calls. Yeah, I saw it too. I saw it too. I've seen that movie like 40 times. Mm. And yeah, now that it's on uh, Netflix, like it, it's come out as transphobic. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because yeah, of right, the scene where he's gagging and, like, throwing up because he kissed a dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not good. That no. is, that's problematic. Exactly. That gets the best boy's seal of disapproval. Mm-hmm, and it's mm-hmm. like, it'll be a picture of me, a cartoon picture of me, looking down my glasses. Wagging your finger Exactly, exactly. And I'll be going, mm-hmm. it'll be a gif. Mm-hmm. Like, no, uh, a gif. 
Ah, okay. That's what we Jiffy refer to. popcorn. Yeah, we refer to them as GIFs on this podcast. Oh, okay. Because it pisses off Alex. No um, other reason. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, go ahead and, uh, like that, go ahead and continue. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I do think uh, there's a little bit to uh, his older movies, but they're just not really. They, if you go back as, like, a fond childhood memory, you're not going to get gold. This will be a goose that laid, like, an Easter egg. Like, plastic. Yep. Full of, like, uh, went to the Palmer chocolate. Remember yeah, that gross the, shit? The chocolate that doesn't taste very good. It tastes good. like chalk. If you eat more than one Ooh. bite, it just tastes I would like never shit. eat one bite. If it says Palmer, I'm just gonna throw it on the ground. Somebody else can pick it up. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is basically, if you took an amalgamation of all his characters and smushed them into one, like, socially anxious, like, autistic man. All of Adam Sandler's characters, right? Yes. What about Jack and Jill? Uh, see, that's two characters. You smudge him because he's 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 a little pretty in this movie. He's got nice hair. There is oh. a scene where they talk about how they wanted to eat his face because it was so cute, and yeah. then she and then he says he wanted to smash her face in with a sledgehammer. Yeah, because she's so pretty. Yeah, yeah, that's how a lot of men feel about women, but mm-hmm. they end up behind bars. <laughs> yeah. That's where you deserve to be, Joe. Ah, I don't think I'm that bad. Uh, I give it time. Okay, because I just want to find the pretty lady, and... Joe, you better stop right there. I don't want to know what you would want to do with a pretty woman. I don't care, even if it's wholesome and good. I don't want to hear about it, Joe. to hold her hand. You stop it right there. Give her a little smooch. Joe, I will slap you. Mm. Read off your note card I gave you. Okay, so there is a underground theory about this film. Would you like to hear it? No. Mm, Okay. So, next time I'm Best Boys. <laughs> okay, what is it, Joe? Okay. Uh, so, Barry Egan is actually Superman. Superman. Yes. Okay, so, he has a blue suit and red tie. Blue and red Superman colors. I thought it was black tie. No, it's red. Maybe it was just the lighting. Yeah. Um, so, uh, in the beginning, whenever he's got that toilet plunger, right, it's an unbreakable handle. He smashes it. So you think that's just a joke about how he's got a faulty plunger, right? Like, it was deeper. I thought it was a joke about how he was, like, ready to snap. Yeah, yeah. Because he's unbreakable, breaks it. Yeah. So, Lena Leonard, L.L. Lois Lane. Hmm. Uh, and then he, Superman was incredibly lonely until he met Lois Lane. He's incredibly lonely until he meets Lena. He listens to DJ Justice, a big fan of Justice. Oh, ooh. Yeah. Um, so he has the power of flight. Oh, fuck off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was a whole subplot based on the, what was the guy's name? So the the, the real man was Philip Davis. Uh, he bought 12,150 cups of Healthy Choice Pudding. Because they were doing a flyer mile thing where if you buy if you buy some teriyaki chicken, you get a 500 miles with a coupon, you up it to 1,000. But it was it was unified against all the brands, so you can buy a twenty five cent cup of pudding and get a thousand miles. Yep. So he got more than a million miles for three thousand bucks, and then uh, Anderson liked that story so much he based a little bit of that in he like, okay. copied the yeah, story. Okay. So he's got the power of flight. What else, Joe? Uh, so whenever he's running uh, from the guys, he's able to he's able to speed past their car, even though they're going like pretty fast. They're able to just like make it up to him. Oh, that's true. Yeah, and he's always running. Okay, so, in the ending shot, and I've got this pulled up for you, go to last shot JPEG. So, it looks like uh, Lena is on his back like a red cape, and they're flying through the air. That's a bit of a stretch. Okay, okay, but listen, listen. He's got a villain, Mattress Man. That's like a super villain. Um, okay, and then listen to this. He's got seven sisters, right? Where'd Superman come from? Outer space. Now, in the Pleiades, a a system of stars are actually called the Seven Sisters. Oh, uh, ah, that's, this, there's enough here to have. Yeah. Has anyone approached freaking the No, I don't think so. No, I've never heard confirmation. I mean... Yeah, I mean, Superman could be a very awkward character. He was yeah. almost played by Nicolas Cage. He's a goddamn alien, like, in a human world. Oh, and uh, whenever he goes, he punches the uh, the map on, like, his wall. And, like, there's actually, it looks like it's a concrete wall, but the, he punches so hard that the map's caved in and, like, sticks on that spot. Where Was it caved in on fucking Kansas? Mm-hmm. 
AB. Shit. I'll have to rewatch the movie. Yeah. Oh, and then also, he's able to fight off all those guys with, like, nothing. He's, like, a scrawny little guy, but he's got Superman strength. I mean, Barry Egan's and Clark Kent, maybe. Mm, maybe. All the pieces come together, if you think about it. It's kind of like a hundred-piece puzzle, but you're missing four pieces. Yeah, the cat ate two. Where, or you're missing about 20. So you can have most of the picture there. You're still missing some other parts to know for sure if this is an iguana or yeah. if this is a frog. Yeah, because it's like Adam Sandler's like left ear and nose are missing. So yeah. you can't quite make out if it's still him. Yeah, as far as you know, you can have a bird beak. Oh. But I mean, yeah. No, I mean, that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's it's possible. Power of it. If you're interested in rom-coms, but you don't want to watch some garbage one that came out, like... Yeah, like the, 50 First Dates. Yeah, the, the, or, lov- the lovely city of angels, or some or, bullshit oops, name like I that. I married my mother. Like, whoopsie daisy, I'm my own grandfather. Oh, oh, that was a good Futurama episode, though. Yeah, but if, if you want to see a rom-com that's not your typical garbage Hollywood throws it out during fall... Oh, okay, so I, get this, I'm going to pitch it to you. It's going to be called Puppy Love, right? Young man, he's got walking his dog. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And then he meets a young, cute dog walker, right? Oh, she's beautiful. She's everything he needs. Joe, she's... is this going to end in him fucking the dog? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I thought so. Okay. I'm gonna, we're going to go ahead and end this episode right okay. here. I'm going to stop okay. it right there, um, Joe. But the tagline is, sometime you just need puppy kisses. I thought it was going to be, sometime you just need some tail. Oh, <laughs> yeah.